I think by now my love of the Minmata Republic's Thrasher is pretty well documented, as is my adoration of Abyssal Dead Spaces as one of my favourite types of content in EVE Online. Therefore, it was only ever a matter of time before I combined the two into a video, but what if I told you that this humble and rather cheap destroyer can actually run an Abyssal Dead Space in three to four minutes, maximising the ISK per hour potential that you can get out of those sites. Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie, and that's exactly what I'm going to be showcasing in today's video. How a Minmata Republic's destroyer, the Thrasher, can run an Abyssal Dead Space in 3-4 to four minutes, and it's really quite easy to do to boot. Before we go any further, a huge thank you and shout out to my supporters on Patreon. Their names are listed at the end of this video, and if you want to learn how you can support content like this, I will give details further toward the end of the video, so stay tuned. Otherwise, let's jump right in. The Thrasher is an incredibly popular ship with new pilots. It's actually given away to Minmata Republic pilots at the end of their career agent missions, so it's very easy to get into one of these literally in your first day of playing, and it's only a few days to a week of training to get it to a truly monstrous level. It's also an incredibly versatile ship that can be fit for all kinds of different purposes and in all kinds of different ways, and I have covered it on this channel before as a PvE ratting with agent mission encounters um, elsewhere, and I will try and put a link to that in the description if I remember. Now this particular fit is actually showcased on Ace Face's YouTube channel. He is a brilliant EVE Online YouTuber who focuses quite a lot on Abyssal Dead Space content, so I watch him an awful lot, and I, I don't want to take credit for this fit because this is very much his. I just want to share it with my audience because, oh boy, this thing is just incredibly fun, surprisingly cheap, and just does so well. It's just insanely fun to run. Now, rather than using auto cannons and going for high DPS but short range, this fit, which he refers to as his 360 no scope fit, is very much all about the artillery and the absolutely monstrous alpha strike damage it can do. Now, Alpha Strike is the concept of per volley damage. Basically, if you activate your turrets, how much damage do they do all in one go? Not including your reload, not including all of the cycle times and things like that. It's not DPS, it's just the straight up damage per shot. And in this case, you can see this has an absolutely monstrous Alpha Strike of almost 2,000 hit points worth of damage. This means this fit essentially can one-shot most of the ships that are in an Abyssal Dead Space, and even the ones that it doesn't one-shot tend to go down in as few as three hits. This means that you can run a site incredibly quickly, and the fit is naturally designed to try and maximize on that as best as possible. So for the high slots here, in our turret slots, we've got 200mm Howitzer Artillery 2s. Howitzer Artillery for the long range and high alpha strike, 200mm to really maximise on that. You can see we've got an optimal range of 11km and a fall off range at 21km. So basically, you're good for massive damage up until about 30km out. And considering this thing only has a lock range of 32km anyway, it means if you can lock it, you can deal insane amounts of damage to it. Beyond this, we're using EMPS. Essentially, I'm going to be running into an electrical dead space, which of course means all of the enemies, and myself, have a reduction to our electromagnetic resistances. If I then am doing primarily electromagnetic damage, as you can see it does here on the ammo, 210 HP of electronic damage, essentially we're going to cut straight through that weakness and deal the maximum amount of damage possible. This genuinely shocked me the first time I was using it. For the low slots, we're going to maximise that damage again with two Gyro Stabilizer 2s to really kick that up into gear, and in the rig slots we've even gone for a small projectile collision accelerator 2 to just focus on the absolute damage per strike. We don't care about reload, we don't care about DPS, we want to kill everything in one hit. We do need a little bit of support in order to survive an Abyssal Dead Space, so we've got a small Clarity Ward Enduring Shield Booster, uh, propping up a small FS9 Regolith Compact Shield Extender. Essentially, make our shields bigger and have something that we can repair them with. We do have an ancillary current router here because this is a very power grid hungry fit because of those artillery. The artillery take a lot of power grid to fit, so we do need to extend it a little bit with that. 
Finally, we're going to add some propulsion with a 5 mega newton YT8 compact micro warp drive. This allows us just to be a little bit nimbler inside and move between the boxes and the gates, etc., whilst blapping everything en route. This is not an overly expensive fit. You're looking around 20 million isk for everything, including all the ammunition that I have it's stocked in on this. Um, and it's not overly skill intensive either. Just get into a thrasher, skill up all of your small projectile cannon weapons, uh, weapon skills. Make sure you have the artillery specialization just to try and get as much damage out of that. You are gonna need some fitting skills, especially things like your power grid management in order to make this all work. But it honestly doesn't require all that many skills. Anyway, enough of me waxing lyrical about how awesome this fit is, let's showcase it. As with all Abyssal Dead Spaces, I moved to my safe point before dropping the filaments just to make me a little bit harder to gank as I come out of one of these things. We are going to need to be in a fleet with ourselves, which you can see I've already done down here, and we're going to need a load of tranquil electrical filaments. You'll need two of these for every run you intend to do. I want to demonstrate two of these, so I'm going to bring four with me. Now that we're in a safe space and we are fleeted up, I'm going to use those tranquil electrical filaments, make sure it's set to two destroyers, and then activate for the fleet. Now this will open up a rift behind me here, cool looking thing like this. We're then going to go into our exploration filter, jump through the abyssal trace like this. It's going to give us a final warning that we have 20 minutes to complete this before it was going to collapse behind us. Oh, you sweet summer child. Here we go. Into the Abyssal Dead Space we go, Tranquil Electrical Filament T0, and let's showcase this bad boy in action. So straight away, there's the Triglavian Bioaccompanative Cache. We are going to approach that, we're going to activate the Micro Warp Drive, and the second that it is in range, we're going to start locking onto it. Same with the Damovic here. So I'm holding control, we're going to click onto that, and we're going to click onto the Damovic. I'm actually going to hit the Competitive Cache first. Oh, didn't quite get it in one, a little bit too far away. We're going to get it on the second time, though. You'll see why I'm bothering to do this first now, because I can then go open cargo. Whilst I'm drifting towards the cargo, I can then now be taking out that Damovic and one shot down to half health. Loot the cache as we drift towards it and then start to move towards the gate. Second shot, getting a couple of glances and bits there, but OK, it's a Damovic. They're small targets. It's to be, you know, to be expected. There we are. That's the first room done. We're through the gate and it's not even been a minute yet. Second room. What do we now have? Biocompetitive cache and some spark needles. OK, so we're going to move towards the cache there. And again, we're going to wait until we have anything in range, lock onto it and just blap it in one go. Looks like I'm not actually going towards the cache. There we are. We can now start locking onto that and the sellers So the cache down in one hit, immediately right click drag, sorry, middle click drag to open cargo. And then as we drift towards, we're gonna start shooting those to sellers down in one hit. Gonna put my shield booster on as well. And again for the next one, activate and it should go down in one if I hit it. Oh, not quite. Okay, failed to loot that. Let's get a bit closer. I bounced too fast. There we are. Now we're gonna go to activate the gate. And by the time we reach that gate, that Tessella should be dead. Oh, yep, there we are. Little bit slower than I would like on that particular room. But again, we are not even two minutes into this run. Two minutes into the run now. And I'm already jumping into the third room. And I can just leave the shield booster running for a bit and just take that back up. I did take a bit more damage than I was expecting to there. I did kind of mess up the approach. So we're going to approach the biocompetitive clay uh, cache. And again, this time we have a cruiser. Nice. Something a little bit different to showcase here. Turn the shield booster off. Let's lock onto the biocompetitive cache and the Lancer as well. So the competitive cache, let's blap it and then open cargo. Activate the shield booster and then start blapping the Lancer. Again, ready over here to loot the second we're in range. So we're going to click, 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 loot everything, then start to approach the gate. And you'll see that Lancer very quickly going down. I'm taking very little damage back. I am getting like here some nice hits and wrecks. Oh, I got here a bit faster this time. Just wait a second. Shouldn't ever really slow down like this because I will start taking maximum damage, but I reckon I can kill it now. And there we are. That is the, the entire of that dead space done. And it is just over three minutes, three minutes, 12 seconds that run was. 
we're already back out. How incredible is that? So now at this point, I'm going to activate my shield booster, not my volume if that recorded that, and reload everything whilst we wait for this trace to disappear. We're also gonna set full speed and then immediately stop ship just to get rid of our invulnerability. We're gonna stack everything over here, find the tranquil electrical filament. So I picked up a new one whilst we were in there as well. Cool, that's good to know. And as soon as that trace starts to disappear, use the tranquil electrical filament, activate for fleet, and we're gonna jump in for round two, turning the shield booster off before I flatten my own capacitor. Back to expiration, abyssal trace, activate the gate, jump in. Let's just prove that that wasn't a fluke. Start the, t uh, will you start the time please? Or start the fans please, that was, wasn't it, in Crystal Maze? Okay, here we are, to sell it again. We're gonna move towards the biocompetitive cache once we have the approach set. Single to sell this time. Not too bad. Start to lock on. Let's do the click and drag approach. There we go. Biocompetitive cache. Boom, down it goes. Move to loot. It's gonna be on everything, that's why I can't see it. Move to loot and start shooting the Tessella with the shield booster active as well. Oh, only a glance that time. That's okay, that's okay, the next one should get it. Nope, okay, no worries. Not scared, we should be absolutely fine here. Start to approach the gate, there we are, nice big hit there. Tessellas are quite hard to hit, they're small, they're fast moving, kind of what do you expect. I'm actually gonna just hit a reload here. You'll see that actually I can usually get through one of these runs without even needing to reload. First room, one minute, just over a minute by the time we're launching through. Tiny bit slower than we had the first run, but that's okay. It's not like it's slow by any stretch really, is it? Gonna move towards the biocompetitive cache again, and we've got a Damovic. A little bit further out this time, I should be able to get the cache and blap it instantly. Is it gonna go down in one? No, we're gonna take two. Cool, time to lock the Damovic as well. Cache is now down, so we can now loot the cache and start shooting at the Damovic. Nice and close to that cache. Grab the loot, grab the loot, grab the loot. There it is, got the loot. And now we start to approach the gate. Damovic takes a couple of uh, moments to hit. If you're actually manually piloting this, of course, you can just change your direction to be a little bit more uh, so that you're, you've not got as much traversal velocity going on. But hey, I'm just showing that this is actually pretty easy mode as well. That's actually now faster than two minutes. We're two minutes in now and already in room three. What do we have? Ah, almost the same again. We have a Lancer. Cool, no worries. Biocompetitive cage down in one hit from range. Let's start approaching that for the cargo and start shooting the Lancer. Again, I'm gonna put the shield booster on here because I do take a bit of damage as I approach. As we get close to the cache, I start clicking in the loot all section here so that I grab it as we pass. Click, 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 click. There we are, loot all. And we're gonna to start to move towards the gate so that we're nice and close to it by time uh, this thing goes down and it's down. Simple as that. We are now 17 minutes 15. That one didn't even take three minutes. So when I said between three and four minutes, you can actually do it faster than three minutes. We're back out into normal space. That took from entrance to actually arriving in K space again, a total of two minutes and 55 seconds. That's impressive, I think. And what did we get loot wise? Let's stack all. That's not bad, nine, uh, nine and a bit million of which, okay, it's three million isk for those two runs. So three million isk in six minutes, multiply that out into an hour, that's 30 million an hour easy in a thrasher that is just ridiculously fast. Now, ultimately, you can probably downgrade a little bit as well so that you are not using the Republic Fleet EMP. It's going to take a little bit longer to do, but I do recommend it because, that, again, the faster you can do it, the more isk per hour you make. And the Republic Fleet EMPS isn't overly expensive at all. Very simple build to run here, great fun to use, a good amount of isk per hour, and that's just based on what I've got in those two runs. If you're lucky enough to get something like a blueprint or some of the, um, like the other day, I actually managed to get one of the afterburner, um, the module modifier things, I, the name has completely escaped me at the moment, but you can make big isk on these surprisingly quickly. 
but that's what I wanted to showcase to you all folks. Remember, I did not come up with this fit myself. This is courtesy of Aceface. Head across to his YouTube channel, tell him Captain Benzie says hi, and sent you guys over there to show him some love and support. He's been doing this a lot longer than I have, so kind of doing a double thing here, showing my love for the Thrasher and Abyssal Dead Spaces, whilst also showing some love for a fellow content creator who one day I hope I can be as awesome as he is at this game. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching right the way through to the end. If you do want to support this channel, the easiest and cheapest way to do so is to hit like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Completely free, helps me out no end. If you do, however, want to go the extra mile to keep me making content like this, then you can either join my Patreon, like the folks you'll see listed at the end of this video, or you can donate on a on my PayPal via a tip jar. I even have a Redbubble merchandise store if you fancy getting yourself some cool Captain Benzie or Eve-based swag. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching right the way through to the end. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden!